The first snow fell on the day I returned to my hometown. No one was expecting me, and the quiet streets were blanketed in white, giving the town an eerie, frozen stillness. My family home stood cold and dark, abandoned since our parents' deaths last winter. I had inherited everything, the house, the land, the legacy. But the one thing I wanted to mend was the broken relationship with my younger brother, Jake. He had always been a shadow in my life, and I thought coming back would be the first step toward reconciliation. We hadn't spoken in years, ever since we were kids, Jake had been the golden child, charming, reckless, and always favored by our parents. I was the one who did things by the book, stayed out of trouble, and never got the same attention. But I had hoped that time would soften those differences, that we could find common ground now that we were adults. I was engaged to Marie, had a good job lined up, and for the first time in a long time, I felt like life was finally going my way. The house was as cold as the outside world when I stepped inside. The heating had been turned off since the funeral, and the snow outside was starting to drift against the windows. I lit a fire in the hearth, hoping the warmth would chase away the uneasy feeling that had settled in my chest. The memories in this house were heavy. Like the snow, they buried everything, making it hard to breathe. Jake showed up that evening, just as the wind began to howl outside. I hadn't told him I was back, but somehow, he always knew. He waltzed in, snow dusting his shoulders, with that same arrogant grin I remembered from childhood. He acted like he owned the place, as if nothing had changed between us. Nice to see you, big bro, he said, brushing the snow off his jacket before tossing it onto the couch. Didn't think you'd come back. I didn't plan on staying long, I replied, my voice colder than the wind outside. Just needed to get things in order. Jake chuckled, as if my words were some kind of joke. You always did like to be in control, huh? We exchanged stiff pleasantries, but something about the way he kept glancing at the fire, then back at me, set me on edge. There was an air of unfinished business between us, a tension that had followed us through the years. I had hoped we could talk things through, maybe clear the air, but Jake wasn't the kind of person who apologized or even acknowledged the past. After a few minutes of awkward silence, Jake's expression shifted. His grin faded, and he leaned forward, his eyes narrowing. Listen, there's something you need to know about Marie. My heart skipped a beat. What about her? Jake hesitated, then sighed dramatically. She's been spending a lot of time with me lately. What do you mean? I asked, my voice tightening. He shrugged, as if it was nothing. We've been, talking. You know, about you, the wedding, everything. She's been having second thoughts. I stared at him, trying to process what he was saying. Marie and I had been planning our wedding for months, she hadn't said a word about having doubts, but then again, there had been those late nights when she'd come home tired, distant. I had chalked it up to work stress, never once imagining there could be something more. What are you getting at, Jake? I demanded, my pulse quickening. He leaned back in his chair, a sly smile creeping onto his face. I'm saying, maybe you're not the right guy for her, maybe she's realized that. The room seemed to spin around me. You're lying. Jake laughed. A cold, mocking sound that echoed through the empty house. Why would I lie? She's been coming to me for weeks now, telling me how unsure she is. You think she's really going to marry you when she's in love with someone else? I stood up, my fists clenched at my sides. Get out! But Jake didn't move. He just sat there, watching me with those icy blue eyes that always made me feel like I was the one who didn't belong. You really want me to leave, knowing what I know? My throat tightened. You're bluffing. Am I? Jake stood up slowly, stepping closer. You think you know Marie, but trust me, you don't. She's been with me. The words hit me like a punch to the gut. I couldn't breathe, couldn't think. For a moment, all I could hear was the howling wind outside, the snow battering against the windows like a relentless reminder of how everything in my life was about to collapse. You're lying, I repeated, though my voice was weak. Jake smirked. Ask her yourself, if you don't believe me. But I wouldn't waste your time. She's made her choice. My vision blurred as rage bubbled up inside me. I lunged at him, my hands colliding with his chest, shoving him backward. He stumbled, then laughed as if the whole thing was a game. Always the hothead, huh? That's why she came to me, because you're too blind to see what's right in front of you. I hit him again, harder this time, my knuckles connecting with his jaw. Jake staggered, clutching his face, but the smile never left his lips. You think you can solve everything with violence? He taunted, wiping the blood from his lip. That's why you're losing her, you know. She wants someone who can make her feel safe. You? You're just a bully. The fire crackled in the hearth, the only warmth in the room, but it did nothing to melt the ice that had formed in my veins. I wanted to kill him, 
I wanted to wipe that smug grin off his face forever. But then, in the midst of the chaos, I heard the front door creak open. I turned, expecting to see Marie, but instead, it was the wind that rushed in, bringing with it a flurry of snow. It swirled around us, cold and biting, and for a moment, I wondered if the storm outside was a reflection of the one brewing inside this house. Jake's words rang in my ears, each one a nail in the coffin of my relationship with Marie. Could it be true? Had she really been sneaking around behind my back, confiding in Jake, of all people? The thought of them together made my stomach turn. But then, just as the door slammed shut again, a figure appeared in the doorway, Marie. She stood there, her face pale, her eyes wide with shock. She had heard everything. Marie, I began, my voice hoarse. She didn't move. For a long moment, none of us did. The silence was unbearable, thick with the weight of unspoken truths. Finally, she spoke, her voice trembling. I didn't want you to find out like this. My heart sank. The confirmation I had been dreading fell from her lips like shards of ice. I felt the world crumble beneath me, just like the snow that crunched underfoot outside. Jake smirked behind me, as if he had won some twisted game. Told you. But before he could gloat any further, Marie stepped forward, her eyes locked on mine. It's not what you think, she said softly. Not what I think? I echoed, my voice breaking. Then explain it to me. Explain why my brother just told me you've been with him. Marie shook her head, tears welling in her eyes. I never loved him. I never wanted him. He's been manipulating me, making me feel like I had no choice. Jake's smile faltered. What are you talking about, Marie? You. You used me she snapped, her voice rising. Every time I tried to fix things between you and your brother, you twisted it, made it seem like I was the one who needed you. But it was never true. My mind was spinning. Was this real? Could I believe her? The cold outside seemed to seep into the walls, freezing everything, including my thoughts. I wanted to help, Marie continued, turning to me. I thought if I could get close to Jake, maybe I could understand him, understand why he hates you so much. But I made a mistake. I should have told you everything. I should have never let it go this far. Jake's face twisted with anger. You're lying, he spat. You came to me. But Marie stood her ground. No, Jake, you manipulated me, just like you've always manipulated everyone around you. In that moment, everything became clear. Jake had always been the problem, the poison in our family. He had turned Marie against me, just like he had turned our parents against me. But now, as the snowstorm raged outside, I realized I wasn't going to let him win. I stepped toward Jake, my voice steady, get out. For the first time, he looked uncertain, as if the ground beneath him was finally starting to crack. You can't just get out. My voice was cold as the wind outside, and this time, Jake didn't argue. He grabbed his coat, casting one last hateful glance at both of us, before storming out into the snow. As the door slammed shut behind him, Marie collapsed into my arms, sobbing. I held her tightly, unsure of what the future held, but certain of one thing. The storm had passed, and we would rebuild, together. The end.